I'm going to go ahead and create that drawing again and make sure we understood how to use the custom template that we created for this part. So we're going to come up here again and create a new drawing. Now it automatically shows you your standard default new drawing and it highlights that and select it. But we created this custom one so we're going to use it as well. So we went ahead and selected that and what SOLIDWORKS is doing now is going out and open up the model view and I'm going to replace all these so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So I place that part in that view and then immediately I go up to the top because we're in ANSI ISO and I can place my top view off my front view and then come over here and place my right view. And if I go at a diagonal, I can place in my uh, isometric view. All right, that looks good. Now keep in mind, let's roll down here on the side over here. And it says everything is at half scale. So let's go ahead and hit escape. And that way we won't keep placing views. Now what I want to do is I want to kind of line things up a little bit better. I'm going to come over here off this corner. And I'm going to just uh, actually take this and just go straight up. Select it and go straight up to be about right there. And that pretty much orients myself to the views I'm, custom, I'm customary to working with. Now, as I move this, these parts all move together. These views of the parts all move together. So we'll keep it at that. Now, I want to see my logo on my drawing. So I'll click on this. And then what I'm going to do is come over here and select this right here. And it shows you my logo. Now, this looks pretty bold and thick. Don't worry about that when you print the drawing and create the PDF file for it, it's going to look just fine. Now, since I don't really have any hidden line views over here, I don't have to go and change any of this for the part. But that looks excellent. So now I've got this all placed in here. And let's go ahead and go back and look at our original drafted drawing in SolidWorks, excuse me, that we created on our website. Get out of YouTube here and go to my website. All right. We got a dimension here, a dimension here, and a dimension here and there. So we're going to use this as our reference. So we'll come back to SOLIDWORKS and we'll place those in our actual drawing. So we'll go with Smart Dimensions. And I'll click on this edge here. And click on this edge here. And come down and that places the 5 in there. Now again, this is really nice because SOLIDWORKS automatically knows what you're trying to do. And it goes ahead and have its settings where it sets the gap and everything off of that. So that looks pretty good as well. And now what I want to do is to go ahead and create the depth on this view up here in the top view. So I'll put that right there. And I'm going to kind of line it up to somewhere around in here. Get as close as I can. We'll try right there. All right. And now we'll come up here and put in um, this view here to one come off to the side. Now I'm going to go back and check my drawing, make sure I'm getting all those dimensions in. I got that in, I got that in, I got that in. So now I need to come over here and put this in. Okay, that's good. Back to SOLIDWORKS. And we'll go back to our drawing. And I'll continue in smart dimensioning from here to there. And we'll place in the five. Now, notice how we only have two decimal places. Well, just like in the model, we have to go back and edit our uh, document units. So I'm going to open this up and we'll come up here and edit the document units. And so make sure that everything is set to uh, dual dimensions here. That looks good. Now I think what I might have to do is go and change my annotation uh, settings for my dimensions. So let's go up here and do that. We'll come over here to this and we'll come over to document properties. We'll go to annotations and what we're going to do is look at dimensions and right now it says primary position is two decimal places we'll take it up to four we'll hit ok and as you can tell now we've got our four decimal places in which is what we want that's excellent so now i'm going to come back over here to this sheet format right mouse click on it and edit the sheet and so now it brings this up now it turns the view off which we really don't need anyway we're going to scroll up to here and i'm going to double click on that field and I'm going to change that to part one. And uh, since I've already got that version down there, that's excellent. I'll keep that. Now, I need to change the weight of this. Before I select that, let's go back to the model. You can go to Window, and you can go to Part 1, and you can bring the model up. And again, using our mass properties, we'll figure out what that weight is. And of course, it says it's uh, 0.901. So I'm just going to highlight this right here, and I'll show you here why in a second. I'm going to copy that using a control C to copy. Exit this. 
come back over to my drawing from the window view and look at it. So now what I'll do is, is I'll click on that and because it's 0.09 I'll go ahead and key in control V and I'll hit this and key in 1. So it lets me know the weight of the pound of that. Now I'm going to page over here and I'm going to say that this is copper. Always uppercase. Copper. That looks good. And I'm going to say uh, be blasted is on my finish, which you use like a sandblaster, but you use little glass beads and it, it sandblasts the part and it looks gorgeous. It's like a nice satin finish. So I'm going to say bead blasted for my finish. Okay. And on my comments over here, uh, I'm going to put down, highlight the triple X or quadruple X here. I'm going to say this is a practice part for my engineering portfolio. Period. Now, after I've done that, uh, it's okay that I leave the dates at that because it's currently November the 12th and I'm going to leave that. So I'm going to roll out a little bit here, kind of look at everything and everything looks pretty good. I think I got everything in here I want. Let's go over here and right mouse click and get out of edit uh, sheet by just going back and selecting edit sheet again. So now it's got me out of that and now I have my SolidWorks uh, drawing file that I've created with my custom logo. This is what we're striving for. Now of course always rebuild your file and get rid of that asterisk right there by saving your file. And I'll save my file, my drawing file, hit save. Now, so that I can send this part to other people, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save it as a PDF, but it's gonna show you something that's gonna kinda uh, make you think. So we'll do a file, uh, save as again, here. And I'll keep the same name, except on the pull down this time, I'm gonna say Adobe PDF. And I'll hit save. And it's going to go out and save my file for me. Okay, so it's done that. I'm going to go over here to my directory. Hopefully I can find that file. Yep, here's SolidWorks. I'll scroll down there and there's my part one PDF file. Now what SolidWorks is going to do is going to let you know that you're using the student version of the software. So you can see down here it's using the student version of the software. Now the way you can overcome that is you can open this PDF file in Illustrator and you can delete out the student educational version. But for our purposes, that does not cause a problem. So that looks really good. Okay, now if I want to at this time, I can come over here and select my print function. Hopefully it'll come up and print. And I can print off my drawing on my color uh, laser printer if I need to. I like using color lasers so that way I can pick up the color that I created. So I'll look up here to file and let's go to print. And it should give me a preview of what that's going to look like. Looks great. I like it. Hit OK. And it's uh, sending it off to the printer at this point in time. And we can review this drawing and put that in our portfolio so that we have something to show an employer or a professor when we go to college or go to get hired for a new job. Okay. That's the process. I hope you enjoyed that. Now we can take what we've learned in these last uh, several videos, these five videos, and we can apply this to all our drawings that we've created. Now I'll continue to try to add videos to that. Looks like the printer's printing off my video. Okay, we'll stop here for now.